this guy I'm a fan of. I, uh, yeah, I see him do these open carry demonstrations. I see him on the news. I see him in town hall debates nationally and locally. And this is a guy who is a leader, Michael Cargill. And he lives here in Austin. I'll just do it right here on air. But you're going to have to kind of chase us because we get so busy we forget. I'd like to invite you once a week to come in and do a gun uh, report uh, for us. Uh, so, so, hell, hell of a way to meet you. I'm like, get in here and come work for us right now. Uh, Michael Cargill. And, of course, he's one of the uh, uh, honchos over there at CentralTexasGunWorks.com. Uh, and he spent 12 years in the U.S. Army and studied criminal justice at Detroit State University. And while he was in the Army, he was awarded the Army Commendations Medals, eight Army Achievement Medals, and four Army Good Conduct Medals. I'm not going to go through his whole bio. We'll run out of time with him. He's a qualified expert marksman, both in uh, rifle and hand grenades, and is an airborne uh, qualified parachutist. And I hope he doesn't, they don't send him to assassinate me. I'm joking. We were talking about the Army earlier. And after his honorable discharge, he works in telecommunications and now works in the Second Amendment and everything else. And uh, he just does a lot of amazing um, work uh, managing huge accounts. I'm, I'm not going to get into your whole bio. It's a very interesting bio, and we're just excited to have you here. You're an NRA certified safety range uh, instructor, officer, and uh, just uh, defend the Second Amendment while we've got you here. And it's very exciting uh, to, uh, you know, to see us defeating their last raft of gun grabbing. But I'm concerned after the next event, they're going to come after us yet again. So, uh, Michael Cargill, good to have you here, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate that. You bet. We're going to have you on the nightly news with Jakari Jackson tonight, too, as well. So, uh, again, uh, wow, so much going on. Well, what, what would you say is the state of our Second Amendment? I tell you, well, we have a serious problem here, especially uh, after the midterm elections. I ex actually expect this current administration to come after uh, our Second Amendment again, yeah, for sure. Oh, yeah, they've said. Uh, I mean, that's what she – don't pause or I'll talk over you the whole time, man. <laughs> um, the gargoyle uh, – up there, uh, Senator Feinstein said there will be other events, and we're and then she smiled. <laughs> right, right, and and see the reason I got into this business in the first place is uh, back when I was in the military, my grandmother at 70 years old decided that she was going to travel back to college to get a college degree. My grandmother only got a high school education, so at 70 she wanted to become a nurse. And while my grandmother was traveling back from a college library, sitting at a bus stop waiting for a bus to come, a guy came along, mugged her, and raped her. Oh, my gosh. And I decided that point that I would make sure that every female in my family had a tool, had the tools they need to protect themselves. Is that scumbag in prison? No, he is not, unfortunately. No, but uh, we, I think it's... He's not going to fall down and hit his head, is he? No. <laughs> Everybody rips my grandmother, you know. Right, right, I know. And, and, and I, I just want to empower women uh, to defend themselves because they can't have a police officer on their backs 24 hours. Exactly. These feminists are against women having guns. They're not feminists. They're scum. Exactly. Exactly. 100%. And so that's why I support the Second Amendment. I support all our constitutional rights, but I really, you know, I'm pushing for the Second Amendment. Well, there's also this thing with women that they go, oh, I wouldn't be good with guns. Women, as you know, statistically are as good or better than men with guns. Right. And I'm totally... Have you found that as an instructor? Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. We, we get... It takes me about uh, two minutes to get... Uh, I sit there and talk to a lady and coach her into what to do, what to look for. And then, bam, she hits it. You know, hits it right out of the park. And it will do a lot better than the men in our class. Well, that's what we see in Olympic shooting. They're as good as the best men at shooting. And, and just generally, women are easier to train in firearms. Right. Right. I, I agree 100%. Yeah. Oh, I tell you, we had... Um it doesn't matter. We had a we had a rock star's daughter out with a shooting out of Steiner Ranch, the real Steiner Ranch, and she was like shooting bullseye at 300 yards with a Lapua that we hadn't even sighted in properly, and like it, immediately, and we were all shooting around it till we got it sighted in. It's like instinct. She was shooting even though it wasn't sighted in properly. Right. Uh, we were like, "How are you doing this?" It's like, yeah, it, I tell people, you know, it takes me about. I don't know, uh, nine hours and 45 minutes to actually sit there and talk to a person and teach them how not to pull that gun out. But it takes me all of a good five minutes to actually teach them the actual specifics of Exactly. A good gun trainer will teach you when to use the gun. That's the key. Right. It's not even about, they, they've mystified guns. Right. Like in these movies where you shoot a 357 and it blows you back. I mean, I can shoot 250 cal standing up. It's hard to pick them up, but if I can pick them up, I can shoot them both. Correct. And they always focus on the wrong things. You know, they're focusing on, you know, targeting uh, lawful gun owners rather than just the criminals, you know, and it's about, you know, getting rid of these criminals and empowering the people. You know, it's not like uh, where the president's from, you know, Chicago, Illinois, you know, uh, they call it land of Lincoln. I like to call it land of the lawless. Uh, those failed gun laws in Connecticut didn't work for uh, uh, them in Connecticut. Uh, the failed gun laws in Chicago, Illinois are not working for them there, and they're not going to work for us here in Texas.
Man, I don't know who these guys are that like, go around like raping women. I mean, who? how does it even come in your mind to want to do that? And I just want to see them all get killed. Right. I, I mean, let me tell you, somebody does something to my wife, they're going to get a snub nose 357 pulled out, jammed in their chest, and they're dead. Right, right. Uh, yeah. You know, it, it, and, and it's important that we educate, you know, our community uh, and how to empower themselves to protect themselves because we shouldn't need law enforcement, you know, to, to hover over us and protect us. You know, it's not about, I, I want government to get out of our business, get out of the people's business, and government should be transparent so we can see what's going on with government, but then the people's business should be private. Absolutely. Well, listen, I want you to reenact what I, sh I saw you in like a town hall that was local, but then it went national. And you were in there just tearing them up the other day. That was you I saw, right? <laughs> yes, sir. Okay, I'm just remembering because I said, get that guy. <laughs> I'm always saying, get him. Why haven't we got him yet? And they're like, Jakari interviews him all the time. <laughs> so I'm like, <laughs> so here you are. What do you want to talk about when we come back? Because I'll consider and ask questions all day. Right. Well, I... I I think you know we need to get our federal government to focus on the correct things. You know, uh, stop focusing on universal background checks. As a gun store owner, I actually should be in support of universal background checks. But I, I'm against universal background checks. I'm against having the federal government get involved in pr uh, private sales. That's right. I should add, you, you're the owner of Central Texas Gun Works, aren't correct. you? Correct. Yes, sir. And that's our. That's a great outfit. I never have time to go up there, but I'm going to do it. CentralTexasGunWorks.com. If you're in Central Texas, get over there and get some shooting in today. The important thing about the Pro One filter today is that the material we use for removing fluoride and other heavy metals now will remove the latest form of fluoride called hydrofluorosilicic acid. There's no other fluoride reduction filter out there that will remove that type of fluoride. And it's extremely important because Today, we're hearing more and more cities are using that form of fluoride. We've been having medication forced on us through the water system for quite a while. Most people don't realize it. Most people don't realize the negative effects of fluoride. There's a wide range of health effects that are attributed to fluoride. Bottom line, why should somebody get this new Pro One Pro Pure filter? The reason to buy the Pro One, it's an all-in-one filter. It's convenient, easy to use. It doesn't require the add-on fluoride filter, and in addition, this filter removes the latest form of fluoride called hydrofluorosilicic acid. Well, Michael Cargill is the American dream. He's got a big shooting range, big gun store, very popular, one of the most successful people in Central Texas. And uh, you can go to centraltexasgunworks.com and uh, also uh, cargillforconstable.com. What's going on with that? We're actually not running the constable race anymore. That was something that we did um, uh, last year. Just to educate people. Right. We're, we were actually running against uh, uh, Adon Ballesteros, a.k.a. the cocaine constable. And he actually, when he used to work for DPS, he allowed uh, 4,000 kilograms of cocaine to cross over from Mexico to the United States. So DPS actually fired him. And then he actually got a job for uh, the constable and then eventually ran for constable. And so uh, we actually ran against him in that election. But since I was a, I ran as a Democrat, um, and since I was a Second Amendment supporter, uh, and the, the local leadership in the Democratic Party decided that they were not going to support me in that race because of my Disgusting. Stand, right, my Second Amendment stance. Doesn't matter, though. You got to expose them. Right. right. That's so, what matters. Yes, so we exposed them. And that's what it's about. I mean, a lot of times running is about getting on the news and fighting the new world order. Right. What is your view on politics worldwide? Well, uh, I think we need to get out. We need, the president promised that our people would actually, you know, our troops would return home. He would bring the troops home, and he has not held up to that promise. Uh, and They're still in Iraq, exactly. and, they, and they say they withdrew. They didn't. Yes, and we need to return our troops back to the United States. We need to take care of the United States, take care of our people here. You're like a Ron Ball type guy, right? <laughs> oh, yes, sir. Because I've heard you on the radio and stuff. I just don't want to speak for you. Oh, yes, sir. You're like in the extremist club, basically. Well, uh -huh. you know. I uh -huh. you, like, you love freedom, mom and apple pie. You're a bad guy. Well, my motto is, you know, when they come for your guns, give them your bullets. Absolutely, and that's why we're fighting so hard. You know, for me, it's the line in the sand. It's 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 slavery. I mean, I I'm, I'm not bringing this up because you're black. I bring it up all the time. The first gun laws, as you know, were against black people in the South. Yes, sir. After the Civil War, on record, and then they have all these commentators on BET and CNN and Fox, black and white and Hispanic, saying the NRA is the Klan, and and I mean, where do they? That's a, that's the opposite of the reality. 
Oh, no, exactly. The exact opposite. The National Rifle Association focuses on training. Uh, they may not be as extreme as some people would like them to be uh, because they're, you know, trying to work that political process. But they're sure not the Klan. Exactly. They're <laughs> I mean, sure what? not the KKK. But, I mean, that's obvious. I don't know why they don't. I'm not a sue guy, but at a certain point, you got to sue people. Right. I mean, I'm surprised Fox hadn't been sued for them having their people on there saying the NRA is the Klan and wants to kill black people. <laughs> How do you come up with that? Yeah, well, the people they need to focus on is uh, the current administration because this administration wants to come up with universal background checks. When you do universal background checks, what that's going to do is, uh, first of all, we have over a million people that are locked up in jail right now in this country. Out of that million people, the majority of them are African Americans. So when you come up with any new laws, new gun laws, those laws are going to focus on that. Community. Oh, you know they are. Exactly. And you're going to give the police more power to come after those people and put more blacks in jail. So Who need the guns to protect themselves. That is correct. So this president will actually be the person that more responsible for putting more black people in jail instead of doing the exact opposite. Well, look at what he's doing with AFRICOM, invading Africa, and they're not there to help, I'll tell you that. Yeah, you're absolutely right. It's unbelievable what they get away with, I tell you. It is unbelievable. And not that I like... John McCain or, you know, the other guys that he ran against, Mitt Romney, it's that there's no choice. It just gets worse and worse. But with Obama, this is a guy raised by the weatherman. I mean, it's just creepy. Right. And you, you got to be careful because uh, one of his big supporters is a gun guy. You know, he's, he's being supported by a gun manufacturer. So you, you got to be careful with that, too. Who is? Uh, the president. He's really? one, one of his big supporters. Who is that? Oh, man, I can't even think of the name right now. I apologize. but he No, I forgot. I remember reading that. I, just wanted, right. I forgot. You forgot. That's why I was asking right. you. Right. Uh, Michael Cargill is coming up. We're going to take your phone calls all over the map, but then let's get some gun calls in here. Uh, very exciting to have a pro Second Amendment person in studio with us. Now you can watch Alex Jones live at Infowars.com forward slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. You can also browse the network, the InfoWars Nightly News, and over 60 movies and documentaries all together in one place. You can watch the Alex Jones Radio Show live as it happens. So check it out, InfoWars.com forward slash show. We've got Second Amendment advocate par excellence, Michael Cargill of Central Texas Gunworks. Dot com, and I know the caller's been holding before Vigo Mortensen was on. Uh, Aragorn of Arathorn. But we are going to go to your phone calls. Uh, Mouse Link, who's been patiently holding, I want to get his comment and questions. Uh, Melinda, Frank, Aaron, it'll be all over the map. And then we'll open the phones up for everybody that calls in after that for Second Amendment points uh, with our guests. Uh, but... Michael, I was riveted by the town hall meeting I saw you in. You were really tearing those people up. And I love how they take a few anti-gun politicians and call them moms against guns like moms are against guns. They're not against uh, the government having guns. No, and, and the main goal of these people were is, is actually to strip us of our gun rights you know the, we asked the young lady that was sitting next to me you know what were some of the things that she wanted to do and she said her main thing is she didn't believe that anyone should be able to have access to firearms so yeah there, there's you know and, and what do you say to a person like that you know uh, and i told her that some of the things that we need to focus on um as far as uh, travis county in the state of texas uh, we need to focus on you know i get a person that will walk into my gun store and that person would want to sell me a gun. And then, do you know that there's no way for a gun store to verify if that gun's stolen or not? You know, so those are some of the things they need to focus on. They're always focusing on the wrong things. They're always focusing on individuals and, and private Well, that's rights. because they're all getting kickbacks out of it. That's what the pawn shops are for. Right. I and mean, I can drive down to a mile from here and show you drugs being sold. Cops drive right by it. Right. Right. And, and it, it's funny you say that because I, I actually, you know, contacted, you know, the local law enforcement. I also contacted the mayor's office and said, hey, you know, uh, what can we do about this problem with um, uh, someone walking into the gun store wanting to sell a gun and me, a gun store owner, being able to verify that gun is stolen or not? While that person standing standing right there at the counter, I can actually I can actually call uh the they don't want to make citizens proactive no. to then call and check and see if it's stolen to shut down the stolen gun market exactly they don't want exactly. real solutions exactly no why do they want us to live like in chicago i honestly i do not know and and you know next thing they're going to do is they're going to what send national guard into chicago and, yeah they're saying that now right but i'm sorry i, I interrupted you i'm bad about that 
What did the city council do when you wanted a real plan? Well, I, I let them, you know, I told them, here, here's our situation. Here's what's going on. You know, uh, a pawn shop, they have rules. They do certain things. But a gun store, you walk into a gun store, you try to sell a gun. The gun store, you know, can't dial, you know, the local law enforcement and verify that serial number to see if that gun's using a crime or reported stolen or anything like that. And the... You know, the response I got was, I'm sorry, I know you're trying to run an honest business, but there's nothing that we can do about it. And again, they should just have a program where stolen guns, people can tell the police, put it in a database. Right. It, it, and do you ever have what, you know, look like meth heads or crackheads come in that are obviously super seedy, have a weird story and you refuse to buy a gun? Yes, we've had that situation happen probably about a month ago. A young man walked into the store, and he was really high-strung, and he wanted to buy a gun. He actually wanted to buy a gun to kill somebody. And he actually told that to uh, someone down the street there in, in a sporting goods store, and they sent him to us. And so when he walked into the shop, uh, my, my staff actually contacted me, and I hit the silent alarm. We had the police show up, and they actually pulled him out and sent him to do a medical, uh, medical eval done. Uh, but that does happen, you know, and it's up to it's it's our responsibility as citizens to, you know, protect us, um, you know, from things like that. Yeah, obviously out of his mind. Right. Right. Walking in. I'm going to go. I need a gun to kill somebody. Right. And the other stores then send them to you. Right. Uh, oh, no, don't do go to go to him. It's right. Cowards. See, right. That's right. another thing. Most people are such cowards now or not all everybody, but a large segment that they just never stand up to bad guys. So they just run rampant. Yes, sir. I agree with you 100%. So that's why it's up to the people, you know, to protect ourselves. Um, we need to arm the people. And, and it's like I said, when they come for your guns, I say, give them your bullets. I had tried everything. I'd cut back the amount of food I was eating. I was lifting weights and jogging, but nothing was working. My body was literally starving for minerals and trace elements as well as key vitamins. And as soon as I had that, I immediately could eat half of what I was eating previously and be satisfied. Now, there are hundreds of great products at InfoWarsTeam.com, but I want to point out the three that have helped me lose 37 pounds in just two months. Products like Beyond Tangy Tangerine, Pollen Burst, and Rebound. When I started taking the Tangy Tangerine and other products every day, I lost more than 37 pounds in just two months. Now that's results. I want to challenge my listeners to go to InfoWarsTeam.com and to order just three of their products, and you will see the changes in the way you look, feel, and in your appetite almost immediately. Start your journey to health and wellness today. InfoWarsTeam.com. Michael Cargill that heads up CentralTexasGunWorks.com. It's in South Austin, right off of Ben White, right by Chuck E. Cheese. Got a bunch of Mar um, Marine Corps former instructors in there. And all I hear is great stuff. In fact, he's like, yeah, we cleaned a couple of your 50 cows. We're a big gunsmith, too. Because I never have time to mess with this stuff. Weldon took them in there. Those are some pretty rifles, huh? Oh, yeah. Uh, they want to they wanna test them for you. <laughs> so you liked them? <laughs> oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, well, it's good to have you here with us. We've got callers calling in that are all over the map, and I want to go to some of them. But more about that town hall I saw you on TV with last week uh, and, and how they use this playbook. I mean, this is all about disarming us. Did you see the video we got of the mayor pro tem uh, at the Capitol where people had signs saying no gun ban? And he said, listen, after we get them registered, you're going to need that sign. Then we will confiscate them. But we're not doing that now. That's next. Feinstein, all of them are on record. They want our guns. And they're so disingenuous when they're on CNN going, we don't want your guns. I mean, it should be game over. They're disingenuous. And I think that's why they're losing their gun control debate, because people know they're a pack of scum. Right. They're actually traveling around the country trying to find out different ways to come after individual firearms. And... Uh, I, I tell them, focus on the things that you can actually control, you know, those little things. You know, why don't you go after the, where the criminal's located? You know, we don't need gun control. We actually need criminal control. You know, and I'm not, because I'm not giving you my firearms. You're not going to get them. Uh, you come after my firearms, you knock on my door, and I'm just, I'm giving you my bullets first. Which 50 cal do you like, the, uh, the Navy version or the uh, Army standard? <laughs> I like the Navy version. That was actually pretty nice. <laughs> well, we got to take you out shooting sometime, man. Yes, sir. I, I, I'm just so busy. I want to do the gun show. I shot like three shoots with the Steiners, three great videos coming out soon. But it, it's going to be about us out there with 50 cows trying to figure them out, never shooting those particular ones. Uh, I had them for a long time. Now the price has gone up so much. Thank God I got them a while back. Uh, but if Obama has done anything, they have certainly woken people up, and I think it's backfired on them.
Yes, because they're not focusing on safety. They're actually focusing on, you know, taking people's you know, Second Amendment rights. It's about control and, and, and not about safety at all. If they focus on the safety aspects of it, they focus on the things that they can do within the ATF and the FBI um, in that system. Um, focus on mental health. Those are the things that they can actually control. But they're not focusing on that. They actually want to just go after individuals' guns. And like a per person gets deployed overseas, you know, we're, you know, instead of sending troops home, you know, we've got, I'm sorry, troops deployed around this world. And when, when our troops come back, they're actually labeling them with PTSD. And then once they label them with PTSD, then they want to take their firearms away from them. And then all of a sudden go back and redeploy them again. But take your firearm away from you while you're at home. But you're okay to fight when you're overseas. That is unbelievable. I've seen that. Yes. Well, look, I mean, any corrupt regime wants to go after the veterans. Hitler did it. Yes. He had neither the long knives where he went after hundreds of thousands of soldiers and people. And this is what uh, Stalin did that, Lenin did that, Mao did that. I mean, the, the police and military better be the first ones to figure out that they better get on board with the people and just say no to tyranny. And I see that happening. Between 40 and 50% of the troops I run into are, are listeners, and they say most of the people in their units are awake to the New World Order. What are you hearing? I'm hearing the exact same thing. We need to bring our troops home. We need to... Pay attention to what's going on, going on in our federal government. Listen to what, you know, your, your commander in chief is saying, bring our troops home. Bring them home. That's all I can stress enough. Bring them home. But the globalists have a problem if the military is awake. And, and how is it going to fly saying the troops are the number one terror threat with no evidence of that in these new training manuals? No, I disagree with that. But it's asinine. It's yeah. like saying Mary Poppins is the terror threat. Right. No. No. How about the crooks in government saying that are the problem? <laughs> yes, government is def definitely going to be the problem. Like I said, government should be transparent. We need to be able to see what government is doing, and the people's business should be private. Amazing. Um, what is your concern? Because I know you're really on this issue at the Capitol. I mean, that's why I like it. I always see you popping up. You're at the you know, lead fighting uh, this tyranny. And they're trying to now just label people to, to take our rights away. How do you think they're going to come at us next time? Well, you know, just like we were talking about with the town hall meeting, you have a situation where a young man was at the Virginia Tech shooting. And the guy walks in, you know, the madman walks into the room and starts shooting. Well, uh, he didn't get shot. So he picks up the only weapon that he had, which was his cell phone. He dials 911 on his cell phone. The shooter leaves the room, goes into a different room, shoots people in that room. And he's on the phone for about... Um, 20 minutes uh, with the 911 operator. The shooter comes back into the room, starts shooting again. Only thing he could do is turn around and run. So he gets shot in the rear, um, trying to run from the shooter. As he goes down, a girl next to him grabs, a, grabs his phone and talks to the 911 operator for quite a while. Shooter leaves the room, goes out the room. Shooter comes back to the, back to the room, continues shooting. And they will sit here and they will tell you that they don't think that a concealed handgun license holder would have, you know, been able to do anything about that situation. Well, I, I just grimaced involuntarily when you were telling that story because I remember covering at the time. And I, I'm not just saying this because I've, I've been in situations where people have knives and stuff and I went after them. It, it, but it, it's actually a fear thing. I like attack instead of run. It's just it's what I do. Uh, and because that feels a lot better. I can't do the other thing. It's actually a problem I have. And... I was imagining if I was that guy, I know, and I, because I know about guns, if I'd have seen the guy turn his back or he's around the corner, I would have gone and hidden there. Or I would have grabbed a desk and, you know, ran towards him. And that happens a lot of times now where people do tackle shooters. Correct. I, and I just can't imagine people getting in fetal positions to be killed. I mean, if you're going to kill me anyways, I'm going to fight you. Right. I mean, what would you have done if you were there? I mean, I, I know you're not trying to say you're a macho guy, but you're a paratrooper and stuff. I mean, I think most Texans I know... We, we, even we, you see it, if somebody pulls a gun out, people try to stomp them. Right. Uh, Susanna Hupp's dad tried to go stop the guy and rushed him and got shot. Exactly. At, at the loopies, why not have them have guns? Exactly. Uh, we need to empower the people. The people need to be empowered. The people in Chicago need to be empowered. They don't need law enforcement because law enforcement is not doing it. They the more they hire, it doesn't do anything. Exactly. Empower the people and return that power back to the people so the people can protect themselves. I mean, look at Chicago, where only the government has guns and the criminals. It, it, it's, 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 a, it's hellish. And it's one mile from the president's residence. One mile. That's where the majority of that crime takes place. What is it, 530-something people a year shot there? Right. Killed. Killed.
killed. Killed, and that's something like 3,000 shot? I mean, that is... So what you, you have a situation of the criminals having the guns and your law-abiding citizens are at home cowering down, hiding, because they can't go and purchase that, for, that firearm to protect themselves. And I think of Chicago, I've been there a lot. I have family lives up there. It's a nice city. Right. Uh, I mean, it's a famous city. Why have they allowed this? And that is the last state that does not have a concealed hang-on license program. I know they're working on something right now, and hopefully they will come up with something. Take Dallas. I mean, I remember when they first put the concealed carry in, it was two days after it, it, it had gone in, people had, had been able to do the 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 program in the first you know were issued a few months into it there was a carjacking that were happening all the time i grew up in dallas it was dangerous right there was a carjacking on central expressway during stop and go traffic and a guy was dragging out of a car and a guy stepped out behind and shot the guy dead and and then immediately the carjackings just stopped because now there were guns. Right. And we, we need to learn something from Texas. The rest of the country can actually take this message where, you know, we started our concealed hang-on license program here in Texas back in 1995. Our our crime actually dropped dramatically here in the state of Wasn't Texas. Wasn't it 25%? Yes. And, and it, you have your stats. Um, for the year of 2011, you have over... Um, uh, 63,000 people were convicted of crimes in the year of 2011. Out of that 63,000, only 120 were CHO holders. You know, so the program that we have here actually works for us. Our CHO holders are law-abiding citizens. Um, they're not the people that are going to... Well, let's just say it. Statistically, they're even better than the police because you've got psychos and criminals. Not all of them, but 20% or so, they estimate in criminology. That's a fact. Right. Who want to become cops. They want to do it so they can get away with crime, be a better criminal. You don't have that with CHL because the criminals just carry a gun anyways. They like committing the crime. Right. Why Why go all through that trouble of getting yeah. a license, doing the background check, paying all the fees just to commit a crime when you can just go and grab the gun and commit the crime? So the CHL are the best people. Yes. And they've, they've, they've been looking for problems and they just can't find them. And it's because CHL holders have been vetted and these people want to do the right thing and, and, and protect themselves and their family. Well, it just shows they're people of common sense. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, what is, for people that don't know, in Texas, but also uh, in other areas, what is the current law on carrying loaded firearms in your vehicle? Well, in the state of Texas, you can have a loaded uh, handgun in your vehicle without a license. It must be concealed in a vehicle. Now, prior to 2007, you had to be traveling from one county to another. Well, after that, 2007, everyone became, um, you, everyone's traveling. So it became legal to have a loaded handgun in your vehicle. It must be concealed in the vehicle as long as you're not committing a crime. Anything greater than a Class C misdemeanor, that's an ordinance regulating traffic, or it, the gun is not uh, openly, it's not open. But the problem is you got to get out of your car. Correct. Once you get out of that vehicle, unless you're traveling to and from your home, then you must have a CHL. I tell you, it's, it's even pointless to even have laws on this. The criminals aren't going to follow anything anyways. I, right. just, I mean, it's just pointless. Right. Well, you know, me personally, I've never had time to go to the concealed carry, but I think I'm going to take it from you. And and, and, it's t and uh, you know, my wife obviously knows the law. She, she's a good shot, able to do it. She hasn't had time to go do it. We've got to go do it, myself of all people. Back before that law, I just carried a rifle in my car. Okay. Uh, but then with children, when you're putting them in the car, I'd put it in the trunk. <laughs> uh, or if I was getting death threats, you know, then I'd put the shotgun up in the front with me. But that was only a few times when I had people actually after me. Uh, I want to get into those whole stories here on air, but uh, I, I, the point is I go to like places that don't even have security. I kind of don't worry about it, but uh, it's almost like I have a responsibility to go get a concealed carry just to be there in case I see a crime being committed. It, it's almost like a dereliction of a citizen's duty to not be armed. Right. You, you need to be armed. You need to know what the laws are. Know what you can, what you can, you cannot do to keep yourself and your family out of trouble and to keep them safe. Now you can watch the InfoWars nightly news streaming live as it happens for free. Check it out at InfoWars.com forward slash show. I really appreciate the callers holding so long. Melinda and Mouse Link and everybody, I'm going to you right now. Then we're going to get more into the Second Amendment, take Second Amendment calls in the balance uh, of the hour uh, with the proprietor of CentralTexasGunWorks.com. He owns a gun shop, a gun range, a gunsmith shop. It's it's very popular. Everybody I know tends to use it here in South Austin. And then he's out there politically fighting for your freedom. That's what we need to see from gun shop owners. Not, oh, I'm not political. The ATF will come harass me. I'm going to talk to you about that coming up. But right now, let's talk to Mouse Link, who's been a real trooper holding. Mouse Link, you, you, you had a question. Go ahead. Well, uh, given the current conversation you guys are having about guns in the Second Amendment, uh, I thought we could segue from the futurism stuff that we were talking about earlier into 3D printing. I, I think I was the first guy to 
to bring up this issue on your program talking to Mike Adams a few, some months ago. And I just wondered if, uh, if your guest had anything to say on that subject. Oh, yes, absolutely. I, I know Cody Wilson really well. I've actually um, I've gone to eat lunch and dinner with Cody quite a few times, and we sit back and we talk about the 3D printing and how... Um, and it's it's not a, it's not just about the 3D printer gun. It's about the access to that machine and for the people being able to do whatever they want in their home because that is your home and that is your property. Uh, the the federal government the government needs to keep up with technology. Well, they're using the international lines, but he's in Texas. He should be able to do whatever he wants with the Liberator gun, a 380 that they dropped over France to resist. I mean. What, people can't have in their own home and build a 380 single shot? Yeah, so if you want to sit at home and build whatever, you know, if you want to build something to... Uh, but anybody can build a gun that knows basic metallurgy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and their concern is about it getting through the metal detectors. Well, you know what? Uh, I guess they need to step up their efforts on technology to keep up with, uh, you know, just like, you know, you have your Facebook, you have your online things. The, the government's got to keep up with what's going on. And so they're going to have to keep up with the 3D printing as well. Well, the answer is if somebody sneaks one through, the pilots are armed. You're going to trust them to fly this plane but not have a gun? Right, right. Well, you know, there's, there's no way you can legislate crazy. Absolutely. Uh, Mouse Link, thank you for calling. Good to hear from you. Melinda in Florida, thank you for holding. You're a trooper. Uh, welcome. Oh, thank you so much, um, Alex, for taking my call. I had called on a different subject, but I'm going to talk about what you're talking now. No, no, bring up um, your immigration all, thing. You're polite. You can get into the gun thing after. Bring up the immigration. Well, um, I called about an hour or so ago about the immigration thing in terms of the, Im uh, the illegal immigrants that come into um, Southern California. I'm originally from Southern California, born and raised. The neighborhoods that I was raised in were, you know, um, American, uh, mostly ethnically black, because that's what I am. Um, over the course of 20, 30 um, years, those neighborhoods are now gone. We've been chased out. And now we are getting racist attacks by certain Latino Americans who do not like African Americans, and they're killing us. And well, that actually came out. That actually came out uh, even in mainstream news that you're having like 15, 20, 30 to one, the Hispanic gangs killing blackbirds or mayatas is the term. And again, all the Hispanics I know aren't like that, but it is an issue that 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 I mean Latin America things are based on gangs killing each other Latin killing Latin and and if America doesn't have a gang culture on liberty and freedom and justice it's like we don't have an immune system politically and then groups come in that are gang oriented and it's politically incorrect to say anything about it that is a big issue and so uh, and, and and then government also coming in and putting everybody on welfare has destroyed uh, uh, congruent communities uh, I mean what was it like to see this happen in Southern California it's a huge issue, Alex. Um, I've been speaking, um, talking to people in, in my area to the point where I went to college, graduated, uh, trained actually to be a teacher. I decided not to be a teacher because I saw what was going to be the blueprint on the wall, and I had my own children to, to take care of. I'm a homeschooled mom, been homeschooling for well over 20, 20 years, um, and I have educated and talked to other moms. I don't care what race they are, Hispanic, whoever they are, to get their children out of um, the, the indoctrinated schools here that want to dumb them down and don't want to teach them anything uh, and pertains to how to just live and be human. Um, and pertains to what your guest is talking about, uh, my sons have been raised because they're homeschooled to protect humanity. Um, you are, you, my sons are out for the good. They are out for the good guy. If, if, if someone is being assaulted, somebody's being herded and they're bad, they're the bad guy. It's not about race. It's not about color. It's not about anything. If you are a human being, then exactly. that's Exactly, but the system, the system does use it from every angle, and it, it's, it's a nightmare situation. What was your comment on guns? My comment on guns is that um, as a female who, um, as a very small size female, can't afford to be tussling with men and other people. Yeah. As Stay there. Female. I want to come back to you and then get your take on this because it's the equalizer. I mean, I've got two daughters and, and women in my family are pretty tough, so they're going to be tough. But it doesn't matter. They need to be able to have a gun to protect themselves from criminals. Jakari Jackson here, and I want to talk to you for a second about water. You know about ProPure, our flagship water purification system, but check out some of our portable water filter products at InfoWarsStore.com, the clearly filtered water pitcher. Also, for those of you on the go, we have the Athlete Edition filtered water bottle and the RAD Eliminator Pro filtered sports bottle that removes radiation. And keep in mind, we have replacement filters for all of these products. 
the ever-popular grab-and-go bag favorite, the Lifestraw, the Crystal Quest shower filter system, and the Aquapod kit, great for mass storage of water. And while you're at the InfoWars shop, pick up a copy of our latest book, 31 Days to Survival. You can find all this and more at the InfoWarsStore.com, and don't forget it's your support that funds our operation. Sign up for our free newsletter at InfoWars.com forward slash newsletter. Michael Cargill, entrepreneur, uh, Army veteran, patriot. You can go to CentralTexasGunWorks.com and find out about what he's doing. It's a great website, a lot of pro-Second Amendment info there. And if you're in Central Texas, he, he's not a sponsor, but I'm plugging it. Go in there. You know, uh, we're going to go back to this lady, uh, uh, Melinda, to finish her story and get your take on that in a moment. But you were telling me during the break, your real passion is getting women armed and trained so they can protect themselves and equalize and that is an incredible thing think about the civil rights the human rights the god-given right of self-defense and empowering women who for thousands of years have have been dominated by bad men now you're empowering them i would think gloria steinem and all these so-called liberals uh, would be screaming from the rooftops to arm women yeah i, I applaud melinda because it, it's about empowering women to protect themselves and making it that equalizer uh, when you're walking from that building going uh to your vehicle or whatever it is um you have tools within your means to protect yourself because you cannot have that law enforcement officer there uh, to help you at all yeah, and it's just common sense, isn't it? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, and, and, and I tell you, I love having the women come to our class at Central Texas Gunner Works because uh, the women, uh, they actually, they listen and they want to do the right thing. And they actually come out uh, shooting a lot better than the men. What do you think is going to end up happening long term? Because you seem like a pretty smart guy who's got his ear to the ground. What's your gut uh, on whether they'll be successful or not? Because when they wanted to get our guns... They were demonizing the Second Amendment. Now that they've lost for now, they're like, we never wanted your guns, so we all go back to sleep. But I don't see that happening, but I don't see them stopping. So it's like two freight trains speeding down the track towards each other. What do you think is going to happen? I think after the midterm elections, um, they're going to actually come back again. A second time, a second win, because this president, you know, the current administration is not going to let this go. Uh, they took a big hit. And he's he, he made a promise that to the Democratic Party that he was going to do something about you know uh, guns, and so he's gonna he's gonna come after them. He's definitely gonna come after them. Why do you think they want our guns? Uh, uh, it's about control. It's about control and controlling individuals. It, it really needs to be about safety, and they've lost that 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 target. You know that eye on on the picture there. Um, Plug CentralTexasGunWorks.com. Uh, if, you know, let's say you're a woman out there or a man or somebody who hasn't um, uh, been around guns, you believe all the stuff from Hollywood and uh, mystifying it. How do you demystify it? How does somebody come in and take a basic gun safety class from you? Well, we actually focus on training. You know, we don't focus on, um, you know, mainly selling the guns themselves. I want a person to come in. They want to learn safety. They want to ha learn how to keep their family safe. They want to learn that, you know, we have a, a penal code, 46.13, that says that if you allow your, your child to get access to a firearm, you know, in the state of Texas, they're going to come after you and charge you with the crime. Um, so we, we focus on that training and teaching them about the laws, making sure they're safe, making sure their kids safe, because you don't want your son um, actually going and, and, and sitting with your neighbor's son. You know, we don't want dumb and dumber getting together learning gun safety. I want them learning that in, the conceal, in, in our beginning handgun course or our concealed handgun course or advanced pistol course. Sure. And then once you get that concealed handgun license and you're ready to carry to protect yourself and your family, it's about how are you going to deploy that firearm? How are you going to get out of your concealed carry position where you're a lady and you're carrying inside your purse? You know, how are you going to get that gun out to protect yourself if needs be? Because you may only have four seconds to draw that firearm. And so those are some of the things that we, you know, we go over and we uh, we teach you. As, you can always as tell when women are carrying one because they'll put their purse around kind of on the front. Yeah, they, and they walk with confidence. Uh, and you, you don't want to mess with that person, you know, and I, I give them some pepper spray. I make sure that every female that attends our course gets some free pepper spray. So I'll, I'll give them that because I say, you know, if something happens, 
you have some pepper spray, you get a stun gun or something like that, and something happens, you give them a good shot in the face of that pepper spray, that gives you a couple seconds to get to your gun, that gives you a couple seconds to run away, you know, and, and protect yourself. Well, it's that threat continuum right? where, where you don't want to just because somebody runs up and says something, you shoot them. Right. No, it's like once they start coming at you, then it's the pepper spray, and right. if they keep coming, that's... Right. Getting, getting a good shot of pepper spray in the face, like I said, that gives you a couple seconds to run away or gives you a couple seconds to get to your gun. Well, what's amazed me is I've heard you on local radio, seen you on TV, uh, some of our reporters out at the gun rallies have interviewed you, uh, Jakari and others. But I just keep hearing people talk about Central Texas gun works. It's like Weldon goes, yeah, uh, you know, you don't think you're really cleaning these guns good, boss. Let me take them to a great gunsmith I know. And then I didn't even realize that was you until you told me. Uh, and then I heard other people talking about uh, Central Texas gun works. Um, you guys must be pretty busy. Yes, we stay pretty busy because we focus on training and customer service. Um, you know, you... you you know, people are tired of walking to that gun store and... They act arrogant, like you don't know anything. Correct, and feeling uncomfortable. We actually, you know, I have females that work for us. I have What is it about service places that are selling things that don't know how to give people hospitality? <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know what that is. <laughs> yeah, and so, you know, we want to give them that good customer service. Uh, I have a, a wide range of people that work for me. You know, like I said, I have military uh, veterans. I have uh, females. Um, you know, and we, we're a nice, good, close-knit family, and we believe in taking care of people and actually teaching them safety and the laws. Well, well said. Very exciting. Let's go back to Melinda in Florida. Um, again, we commend you for you know, having firearms, protecting yourself. That's awesome. Uh, did you have anything else you wanted to add on that subject? Well, absolutely. I just want to commend what um, your guest has said, and I would love to train under him just to know what to do the right thing to protect my family, and not only my family, but my neighbors. Um, I believe that as a female, um, being with our small stature and our small size and the fact that we have groceries and kids and babies, we really don't have a lot of time to be fighting other men and other bad guys, and we need to be able to have the drop or any sort of advantage that we have to be able to get the bad guys off of us, exactly. no matter who they may be, um, um, private citizen or government tyranny. Absolutely. So um, I also train my daughters to, you know, you got to do what you got to do. Um, the females, the females, no matter what, tend to get raped. And um, to have that happen to even one of my daughters would kill me. Certainly, um, Alex, with your, with your daughters, you would feel the same that I feel, that it would absolutely rip my heart out. I can't take it. So I tell my daughters, you know, you, you got to do what you got to do to protect yourself. Absolutely. No well, it's are. key to go out and take a gun safety course and then get demystified and then store it properly. And that's just the way to go. I appreciate you calling in. Uh, you know, my issue is this. I'm so busy that I grew up around guns, grew up around basic safety. Four years old, you, you, you put some... I mean, there's different ways to do it, but you go out to grandpa's house out at the farm... And they shoot a watermelon and say, now you see this gun in the toy. You see what it just did. Uh, and then they take you out uh, in bird season and shoot some birds, quail, dove, and say, you see what that did to a bird? This is when you're four years old. And then they set you down with a Folgers coffee can. I can't tell you how many people have been trained the same way with a 410. And you shoot it. And then you're taught, now you don't touch this unless you're told you can touch it and then you're taught the basic safety and you're taken out five six seven times a year because i lived in the city i always loved to go shooting uh and by the time you're 11 or 12 years old i was shooting bullseye free hand with a 243 at 300 yards uh and that's an example of just basic marksman training that made americans in warfare feared all over the world and it's good to see that culture coming back but i'll be honest with you i keep my guns locked up in a gun safe and I've got some instant access pistol safes, and my 9-year-old and 10-year-old are good shots now. And they know you just don't touch guns. And even the BB guns, you know, are in the garage in a locked-up area. They get permission to get those out. And, and they're not allowed to really use them when other kids come over because I don't know how they're going to act around them. Uh, and that's my basic safety, but I should probably even do a better job of that. And, and explain to me the penal code on children and guns. Yeah, you have uh, Penal Code Section 46.13. That's in Texas, but it varies. Right, it does vary from state to state. But the way it works is, if your child gets access to a firearm, no one's injured, it's not discharged, you're going to get off easy, you'll get charged with a Class C misdemeanor. But if your child gets access to a firearm, is discharged, someone's injured, you're going to get charged with a Class A misdemeanor. If your child gets access to your firearm and kills himself, shoots himself, or kills another one of your kids... Uh, we will give you the state of Texas will give you seven days to go and bury your child before they come and arrest you and charge you with the class A. And what you just touched on right now is parenting. You know, what a concept, you know, raising your kids. I remember when I was a little kid, 
my mother would say to me, I, you better be in the house before the, the, the sun goes down. Don't let, you know, don't let your shadow catch you. And, and she's not talking about the, uh, the street lights. It's about parenting. Uh, right now, you have you, you, uh, babies raising babies, and that's going to be part of the problem. Um, if we, people focus on parent, parenting and raising their children, then we're going to have some of these other issues uh, that take place. And now the state's coming in saying, don't worry about parenting. We'll do it. They do an even worse job. Right. I mean, I'm, I'm really worried about society de uh, degenerating. And government wants us all to live like in New York or Chicago in, in these crime capitals. It's so sad. Also, they can dominate us and use the crime wave as an excuse to take over even more. Right. Let's talk to Teresa in North Carolina. You're on the air. Hi, I just have a simple question for you. I saw on the news feed today um, on Facebook, and I looked at the article, but I had to get on the road really fast. It didn't seem to be a spoof article or anything. They said that the government had ordered 30,000 guillotines. Is that true, and why would the government order 30,000 guillotines? Well, the United States has not really historically used the guillotine uh, on execution. They've used uh, hanging the gas chamber, lethal injection, electric chair, things like that. This is a, and I'm glad you called in about this, this is a perennial thing I've heard for 18 years on air. Uh, it's a rumor that got out that a truck tumped over. It's always in Kansas or Texas or New York. And it was, it was martial law signs and guillotines. And it's this whole thing of uh, the Antichrist is going to use guillotines to chop Christians' heads off. Um, and I'm, maybe that's going to happen someday. My point is, is it's an urban legend. Just like this National Stabilization Nasera Act, that's another made-up thing. Uh, I mean, there are good people in government, and there are white hats, as they call them. But still, that doesn't, it's just one of these urban legends. That is a true urban legend. Now, what they're buying is two billion hollow point rounds and other rounds and 7,000 armored vehicles and anti-mine vehicles. And they're trying to take on gun owners, conservatives, libertarians. And they're trying as best they can to divide us along race, religion, and everything else so the government can play the part of the referee. And they're trying to get all sorts of just religious war, race war, social economic infighting, while these big mega banks drain the country offshore. Uh, so th that's their goal. Um, does that answer your question, Teresa? Yeah, that answered my question. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you. God bless. And don't feel bad that you called in about an urban legend. Okay? And it doesn't mean I'm the final say on that. But that's something I can officially say. Uh, to be clear, I'm, I'm, I'm saying I'm not the final say on everything, okay? So don't just believe me. But on that, I can say that's definitive, this whole guillotine thing. And people are like, you're covering up the guillotines. Show me the proof. Uh, Frank in New York, you're on the air. Thanks for holding. Hi, hi Alex. There's actually an interesting C-SPAN video which aired on C-SPAN 1991. There was Jay Rockefeller was at a roast of Pappy Ken. Actually, um, Luke Gingrich was actually in the audience in the crowd and... Uh, and um, you know, Jay Rockefeller is joking about the Trial Commission and Bilderberg. And the video is on YouTube. You just type Rockefeller Roast into YouTube, and it comes up. It's like a seven-minute video. I want to video. play that. Rockefeller Roast, or is it Buchanan Roast? Just put Rockefeller Roast comes up. It's a six-minute. You'll find it. It's a six, a seven-minute video. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll play it like a little bit right now. Here, it's pretty bizarre. It's a very bizarre. Uh, he says the most bizarre. He confesses the New World Order. He says about. He says, if you looked up the Bilderberg in '91, you could hard, hardly find anything. Back in the day, I mean, it was very difficult. Very few people were on it, and uh, so what's this mainstream? I'll put it like a little video right now. Well, you know. uh, playing with blocks. Pat Buchanan and I both had that experience together. His were like the ones you saw in the movie, little round uh, square blocks, colored A, B, C. Mine tended to be called 48th Street, 49th Street, <laughs> Fifth Avenue. There's actually an interesting C-SPAN video which aired on. Well. They talked about Pat um, running for president, and if he did that, I would be very supportive. Hello? Yes, yeah, very Hello? funny, and I heard you turn up your computer, so it was, uh, it was uh, you, you were delayed 30 seconds. But, yeah, we'll find that clip playing on the nightly news tonight. Sounds very interesting. I was unaware of that. She also says, we own the politicians. The presidency has a bad reputation and because we, we, the elite own the, own the presidency and own the politicians. She actually said that in, in, the, in the roast of uh, Pappy Cannon in 1991. This is so bizarre. Like he said, he said, he said, he said, he said you come to the president, why don't you join, join us, New World Order, have total power, he says. 
It's very strange. Well, we're going to play that tonight. That's big. So much stuff's being dug up now and put on the web. How do you think the establishment, Michael, is going to get away with all this corruption as more and more stuff comes out? Uh, hopefully the people will, you know, stay educated and actually hold them, you know, hold their feet to the fire and say, hey, we're not going to take this anymore. Uh, we want, like I said, the federal government to be transparent. Sure. The federal government is not designed to always take care of all our problems. Sure. Uh, <laughs> you know, we, we don't always need the federal government to, we don't need Big Brother to always take care of sure. us. Uh, we need the folk, you know, take care of us. We can take care of ourselves. We're going to go to more calls. Uh, sounds like an American idea. How extreme. <laughs> We're going to go to more calls here before the show ends in about 15 minutes or 14 minutes or so, but I wanted to ask you, because I, I always intend to do this and I don't do it, but but you're actually on my way to work and things are actually in South Austin, closer to where I live, so I live south of Austin. How how fast could I come do the concealed carry class? Because I've sent off to the DPS before, gotten my packet like twice in the last decade, but never went and did it. And I've had other people that are friends of mine that are concealed carry saying, I'll give you a private class, I'll accelerate it all, whatever. But I almost don't even want that. I, I want to go get the course because it's always good to learn. If you wait until September, the law is going to change where it's only going to be four hours instead of the 10 hours like it is now. So if you wait until then, you'll be able to take a four hour course, uh, do your shooting portion, and then right now you can do it online. You go online to the DPS website, fill out the application, and pay the fee, and then we'll turn in your paperwork for you. Who has the best concealed carry law in the country? I, I, I think, um, well, I like Vermont. I actually like Vermont. You know why? That's what I thought was the best. Because in the state of Vermont, everyone can carry openly or concealed without a license. It's constitutional carry. So Vermont is going to be the best state. And again, I'm not you know, liking the fact that it's a law you go do this for concealed carry because it kind of turns it right into a privilege. But I also do kind of like that this much training is going in because my dad's done it. I've read the course online. It's, it's really good. I mean, I, I think it instills gun culture in people and common law in people. Well, put your trust in people because if you give them, you offer them a class, then they will actually come and take a class rather than saying the government says it's mandatory and it's something that you have to do. No, I agree with that. I mean, I, I disagree with making you do it, but it, then it, at least it's... It's good to make the government do something good. Right. I mean, it's not perfect, but at least something good's happening out right, of it. Right, right. And people are actually learning the laws. They actually are willing to take more classes to learn safety. And, and I've also been told that the police treat concealed carry people with more respect. Oh, yeah. yeah. You pull that uh, your driver's license and your concealed handgun license out and show it to the officer, and the officer knows that you've gone to a thorough background check. Absolutely. I just wish the police on average were as good. I know a lot of them really are good, but I, mean, I wish they were as good as concealed carry people on average because there's definitely bad ones hiding in there. Just ask Serpico, who we're getting on soon. More calls coming up. Now you can watch the Alex Jones Show live as it happens at Infowars.com slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. More than 60 movies and documentaries all in one place at Infowars.com slash show. Well, I think I asked a question before we went to break and we were going to come back and talk about it. And now I don't remember. Michael, let me ask you this briefly. What is the best thing? Ever since I was a kid, my dad would say, uh, you know, the old pump shotgun just because, for whatever reason, you didn't buy a semi-auto with like bird shot in it, it was his idea that that was something that wouldn't wouldn't kill neighbors necessarily as easily if, if he shot at somebody and then it went out the wall, or, or it wouldn't kill somebody on the other side of the wall. And then it, he would also have a handgun with those what sure safety slugs the air marshals right. uh, would use. I mean, I think it's important people to also know when you're doing stuff in your house and you've got a gun for self-defense, what is that issue if there's a burglar with a gun and your kids' bedrooms are down there, what do you do? Anything that you're proficient in would be good uh, to have for home protection. But I, I tell people to have a plan. You know, just like taking a trip on an airplane. You take a trip on an airplane, they go over the security plan. In the event there's an emergency, we lose cabin pressure, this is going to drop down from the ceiling, put it over your mouth, assist the person sitting next to you. In the event there's a water landing, your seat cushion be used as a flotation device. But you don't want to use a 50 cal in your house. No, you do not. But you want to have a plan. And in my house, we actually have a, a safe room, a room that I want everyone to make it inside if something was to happen inside my home. If the alarm goes off, uh, something that, you know, alerts us that someone's inside the home, I want everyone to make into the safe room because I don't want to accidentally shoot one of my loved ones. So whatever that you're proficient with, that is what you use. If, if you're No, that's totally smart. And, and people say we're living in fear. No, we're living in power. Right. We're living informed. We're not 
we're not here just going to roll over. Right. You don't want to be like those people um, in, in, in a certain part of, of town where someone knocked on the door at 7.30, 7.45 in the evening, and then someone uh, opened the door, and, and two guys went inside and robbed them with, uh, with tasers and stun guns. You don't want to be like that person. You don't want to be like the person uh, that w worked at home at 12 noon in the afternoon on the second floor of his house. He has his bedroom. He has his office. At 12 noon, he stepped out of his in the hallway out of his office and looked to his left and the guy stepped out of his bedroom. You don't want to be like that person, you know? <laughs> and then he, you know, looked at the guy and said, what are you doing in my house? And the guy ran to get his gun, came back outside, came back out on the stairwell there uh, in the hallway, looked downstairs and a separate guy came out of his kitchen. You want to be that guy. You want to have a plan of what you're going to do to protect yourself. I just, I just, I would have to be starving to death to break in somebody's house. I just do not... And then I just come knock on the door and beg for the food. I do not get this breaking in people's houses. Yeah, these are, these are the stories that we get in in my class. That people tell me, you know, some of the things that they've experienced. So we go over security plan. I give them a plan of what they're going to do. I want to make sure they protect them and their family. They have a safe room. So that way, everyone in their family is accounted for. Uh, so you're and and actually, you know, have cameras. You know around my house I'll, I'll help people set up cameras security cameras for their home and we have a little monitor where they can look at their cameras see you know exactly where that intruder is and their and they're cameras are so cheap now uh, this isn't Big Brother's cameras. These are ours. I got cameras as right. well. It's good to be out of town and be able to look and see what's going on. Oh, yes. I, I can look at my home. I can look at my shop. I can look at my parents' home. I can look at my sister's home because she's single right now. Uh, I can look at all their cameras and control their alarm systems from my cell phone. You know, it's about, you know, me helping them say... You, you know, know what? I got a little... Oh, my gosh. Uh, I, I can't believe it. That the show has gone an hour in overdrive, and I can't get to all these people. Real fast, Aaron in Nevada, you want to talk about car bombing um, evidence? Go ahead. All right, Aaron, go ahead, Aaron. All right, Aaron's gone, and I can't go to Ronnie, Ralph, Clark, and Dean. I apologize. Um, again, I want to thank uh, Michael Cargill for coming in, Vigo Mortensen, the crew, everybody doing a great job. Humanity needs to come together. Visit InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. When you're on the site, you can also tune in 24 hours a day to my daily radio broadcast. There's also a free iPhone app to listen to the syndicated radio show when and where you want.